Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has once again been denied relief by the court. On Wednesday, the Supreme Court rejected his plea for interim bail, though it has issued a notice to the CBI regarding his regular bail application. The court has scheduled a hearing for this matter on August 23rd and the decision on his bail has been deferred. Kejriwal had requested interim bail on health grounds, but the court denied this request, stating that the standard procedures must be followed and that a decision will be made only after hearing both sides. The court has directed the CBI to submit a response to his irregular bail plea. The Supreme Court has issued notices to the Maharashtra and Bihar governments in response to a petition seeking the consolidation of FIRs filed in various states against Udhay Nidhi Stalin for his controversial remarks about Sanatan Dharma. Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Sanjay Kumar have instructed both states to submit their responses within four weeks. The court has also informed Udhay Nidhi Stalin that he will need to attend hearings outside Tamil Nadu and has asked him to specify the most convenient state. Until then, Stalin is exempt from appearing in the trial court. The next hearing is scheduled for the week starting November 18, 2024. Previously, on March 4, the Supreme Court reprimanded Stalin for allegedly misusing his freedom of expression under Article 19 of the Constitution and violating the right to religious freedom. The court has emphasized that as a minister, he should be aware of the impact of his statements and noted that he is not a regular citizen but holds a significant position. Stalin is seeking the court's intervention under Article 32 to consolidate FIRs filed in various locations including Uttar Pradesh, Bengaluru, Patna, Jammu Kashmir and Maharashtra. A nine-judge constitution bench of the Supreme Court has delivered a significant ruling against the central government and mineral companies, mandating the implementation of a tax on mineral-rich land effective from April 1, 2005. Led by Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, the bench clarified that no interest or penalties will be applied to this tax and state governments will have a 12-year period to collect it. The Supreme Court had reserved its decision on July 31st after hearing arguments from all parties involved. During the proceedings, the central government contested the state's right to seek refunds of royalties imposed on mineral wealth. The Solicitor General Tushar Mehta warning of complex repercussions if such refunds were granted. On August 14, the Constitution Bench affirmed that its decision from July 25, which granted states the authority to tax mineral-rich land, would be applied retroactively. The ruling passed by an 8-1 majority declared that state governments have the right to impose such taxes independent of the Central Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act. Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur and seven other judges supported this decision while other Justice B.V. Nagaratna dissented. The Madras High Court on Wednesday provided significant relief to workers by ruling in favour of the Bharti Janta Party. The court allowed a tricolour bike rally to be organised in Coimbatore as part of the Independence Day celebrations. Justice G. Jayachandran delivered the verdict while hearing a petition filed by BJP Yuva Mocha District Secretary A. Krishna Prasad. During an urgent hearing on Tuesday, the judge remarked that there is no harm in carrying flags and noted that a brief rally by the BJP lasting 15 minutes to an hour would not cause any significant disruption. He further stated that the state could not outright deny the request to hold the bike rally which had been prohibited by the Tamil Nadu government. The court found no merit in the state government's decision to ban the rally and rejected it on these grounds. Additionally, the state's Director General of Police was instructed not to prevent rallies where participants respectfully carry the national flag and do not obstruct traffic.
The Supreme Court on Wednesday declined to hear a petition seeking clarification on meaning of words in preamble of the Constitution. A bench comprising Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice Sanjay Kumar informed the petitioner that interpreting these words is not court's responsibility, advising him to understand the meanings on his own. The petitioner, Shivam Mishra, argued that certain terms in the preamble, like fraternity, lack clear definitions leaving him uncertain about their true meanings. He expressed concern that without clarification, he would feel distressed. However, the court dismissed the petition stating they could not comprehend his argument. Watch our special program and share the video to stay informed about the daily court proceedings.